Okay, my friends, another day at trying to figure out what we are looking at. My friend Pedro sent me this, the Crystal Collector, looking at these hidden gems, blue battery azurite crystals. And don't forget, the Crystal Collector, and <clears throat> here's what they are. Now, again, I use a fair use act. I'm not trying to steal anything. I'm going to try to explain why these colors are here and why these little balls are are every here and there and um, they find them like like right there now I'm going to try to explain how they turn into these colors and why we see a variation of the greens and the blues and so forth uh, let's take a look at something called transition metals all right this is the transition metal colors and you see where they show plus two, plus three, plus seven, plus this, plus that? Well, these are what they call oxygenation states. Basically, these metals want to make a complex. They call them transition metal complexes. Form colored compounds, com complexes. And they can vary depending upon the charge on the metal ion. So what does it attach with? Does it attach with something that's a two or a three or a six? And is it well? It, this is it's a little technical. It's not bad though. It's really simple, quite simple. Just pay attention. You'll be fine. Here they are, right in this section of the periodic chart. And this is in your blood. These are blood chemistry. That's that's blood. That's blood. 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 Mostly. Iron carries oxygen around. That's what we always think of as in blood. Well, yeah, but all, all these other metals, you have to have them too, because they are they're the carriers in these complexes. They call ligands. They grab a hold of something and right through the blood, and they drop it off where it has to go. I'll give you one of these. You give me one of those. All they are is they're held by a metal complex. So anyway, this is what's in your blood. Now I've been wanting to do this for a while. This blue and this green I have seen before invading a body part that was an opal. I thought to myself, oh, i got to go find and figure out why that's getting invaded. And then I see these blueberries with that green and that blue. So what are we talking about? Are we talking about copper, nickel? Are we talking about vanadium, chromium? I mean, it could be almost any of those. And I'm really probably never going to figure it out. But I can show you what they look like, and I can tell you, I'm hoping I'll be able to tell you what organ they were next to that caused that chemistry. So let's see if we can put an organ next to what I have. My my specimen, it's not, I don't own it or anything. It's an opal heart. It was cut right in half. I'll show it to you in a second. And we're going to be looking for these colors. And where is that heart in the chest of a creature? And what would be next to where that color invaded? So you don't forget now, this is Crystal Collector. These are all these different colors. Well, real bright blue and all these different colors. Well, you're going to have all kinds of colors because you have all kinds of chemistry in your body. And these are from body parts. These are nothing more than interstitial balls. And uh, so they, they were near all kinds of different chemistry. Let's see if my heart can tell us where this, some of this chemistry might have come from. All right, I might need a doctor for this one. Because, <laughs> you know, I can tell you what's going on here. These are all these transition metals. You see all these different colors? Those became stabilized by some chemistry that was either salty or acid or something caused these tissues to be able to be infused with the metals that stabilize them because they're looking for something to stabilize them with or they're just going to rot. Well, in certain chemistry, they won't rot. And this is the kind of chemistry that creates opals. I'm not exactly sure why. But I do know that it opens up the... It's almost like tanning or something. I don't know what to say. It's, it's like it opens up the tissues so that they can absorb whatever that transition metal is that's just flowing through there in a continuous wet it's got to be real wet for a very long time concentrated transition metals they never get out of that area 
and some some invasive chemistry for, causes them to be able to be infused into whatever chemistry in the ventricle walls and the heart strings and the valves and all that. So they want a certain chemistry to become stable. However, look at this over here. This is why I say the green and the blue sort of intrigued me. Because this, this is different right there than the rest of the heart. This area over here is just nice and this blue, early color. Now this has got some green in with it. That's nobody else has any green. Now this is the bottom of the heart. Now whether the guy was laying on his back or was laying on his front, I have no idea. But this was the bottom side. So this is laying down like this. This was on top. So this one, they come together, and this side is down. I can tell you that because the plasma has risen to the top of this one. This, I would almost be certain that the back of it is basically flat. Just like all my mud fossils, they're flat. But they have a lot of chemistry. Like, this has a lot of chemistry. You can't really see much of it now, but I, I, if I put water on there, it's very obvious. And see, they, they all flat like that. Because it was a, a big flood. It was recorded in history. It's just been annoyed, avoided. So, what was the invading chemistry here to cause this blue and this green? Now, we saw copper, we saw vanadium, we saw chromium. They all have a similar capability to change into that color. So, what if their gallbladder was right there, or what if the pancreas was right there, or whatever it is, is right next to this part of the heart, and I'm not sure what this part of the heart is. Let's go look at a cross-section of a regular heart, see if we can figure out where it is in the body. Because I think these must be... Again, I'm not a heart surgeon, I'm just, just, just a guy looking at rocks. <laughs> Okay, amazingly enough, I think I figured it out. <laughs> it's the spleen, I'm pretty sure. This up here is where you have your plumbing, your valves and so forth. You see it up the top? Then at, this is the bottom of the heart, as far as I can determine. This side here, I believe, bumps right up against the spleen. Let's take a look at uh, the anatomical. Okay, I'm going to have to say I'm pretty confident in what I'm saying. Here's the heart in your chest. And here's all that big plumbing heading up the artery, you know, the uh, aorta and so forth. Now, now we're at the bottom of the heart over here. Can you see that? Just barely. All right, now we're at the bottom of the heart over here. All right, the plumbing is way up here. This is a spleen, and it bumps right into that bottom part of the heart right there. Now, let's look at what the spleen does in the body. Well, you see how intricate the body is? People, even doctors, don't really fully appreciate that. Look at this. This is only the nerves and endocrine glands. Look at this. Hold on, let me back this out so you can see. I mean, when you see the kind of complexity, this is the one that really gets you, is the pancreas. Is that visible to you? I guess it is. All right, anyway, this stuff here, and I, I have some stuff that I've seen on the internet that shows those exact same structures. All of the stuff that's on the earth is... Well, not all of it, but a lot of it's pretty big. Now, this is all about only nerves and endocrine glands. What do they do in your body? It's very, 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 very complicated. But it's not that complicated once you understand what drives everything. What drives everything is chemistry. It's just chemistry. Where does the chemistry come from? It comes from bacteria. It doesn't come from you. Not a single thing in your body creates any chemistry. It's all done by stuff that you eat 
and then the bacteria that live in you, the workers, you break it up and get it ready and construct it. They use their enzymes to make it work for you. Very, very lightly understood. And mostly completely misunderstood. So anyway, that's that for now. Again, I love you all.